Hello students, this is Mrs. Miller, and today we are going to be completing the text analysis workshop for point of view. I am working out of the textbook. I am on page 185. If you are on a computer, uh, you can pull up this PDF file from our online textbook. It's the same page, okay? I would like to work together on this assignment. Here we go. It says Model 1, First Person Point of View. Now you probably remember that a first person, when it's written in first person point of view or from the point of view of a first person narrator, the narrator is a character in the story. Okay, let's read this. This story is told by a teenage boy. What do you learn about him from what he says and thinks? This is called From an Hour with Abuelo. My grandfather is in a nursing home in Brooklyn and my mother wants me to spend some time with him since the doctors say that he doesn't have too long to go now. I don't have much time left of my summer vacation, and there's a stack of books next to my bed I've got to read if I'm going to get into the AP English class I want. I'm going stupid in some of my classes, and Mr. Williams, the principal at Central, said that if I passed some reading tests, he'd let me move up. Besides, I hate the place, the old people's home, especially the way it smells like industrial strength ammonia and other stuff I won't mention since it turns my stomach. Okay, now we're going to read this again and we're able to find out some information about the narrator. Number one says, I'm looking at the close read questions now. It says copy any sentence, then circle the pronouns that show the first person point of view. Um, I'm just going to highlight for now, and if you would do the same, you should have a transparency and a dry erase marker uh, in front of you. Just put the transparency right over this page in your textbook, and we can highlight the information together. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at this first sentence right here. A pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun or takes the place of the character's name. So the word my is a pronoun, and I see it again. I see the word me, um, and that's it for this first sentence here. Those are the pronouns that take the place of the character's name, and that, that shows that this is written from the point of view of a first-person narrator. So after we finish this section, uh, when you write your answers, you can write this sentence if you want to and just and circle those words, or you can pick another sentence. Let's say you want to do the second sentence. I'll go ahead and highlight uh, the pronouns that show first person in that one too. Uh, please follow along with me. The word I shows that it's written in first person. My, my, the word I've, and I'm, and I. So in the second sentence, those are the words that indicate that this is written from the point of view of a first-person narrator. Let's go on to question two. Describe two things you learn about the narrator from what he tells you about himself. Well, this is going to take some inferencing. You're going to have to infer some information about the character. Please push pause on the video and turn and talk to the people at your table and see if you can figure out some information about our narrator. Okay, I would like to share my thoughts with you. I think that the narrator is very, very selfish. The reason I think that, because we need to make sure we use details from the text to support our answer. So the reason I think that is because his grandfather is dying and all he can think about is his own, his own needs or his own wants. I also was able to figure out that the narrator must be pretty intelligent. The way that I figured that out is because uh, he's trying to get into an AP English class and you have to be pretty intelligent to be in an AP English class. And also, um, some of his classes are so easy that the principal is willing to give him a test and if he just passes this test, he can move up to another class. So those are the details to support my answer. Now, you may have had a different answer and that's absolutely fine, but I would like to model for you the way that I restate my question, answer the question, and use details to support the answer. If you want to use the same one that I'm using, you are more than welcome to do that. Okay? 
Please go ahead and take out your notebook if you have not done so. And I'm going to write Text Analysis Workshop Point of View. And I'm going to slide down here and put page 185 Model 1. Let me give you an opportunity to finish writing that down before I go on. I'll also make this a little bit larger for you so you can see it better. Okay, now question number one. Remember, you were supposed to write a sentence from um, the story and then circle the pronouns that showed that it was first person. So I'm just going to put this so you remember that you need to do that. Now I'm going to go on to question number two. Describe two things you learn about the narrator from what he tells you about himself. Um, two things that I learned about the narrator is that he is selfish and he is intelligent. So right off the bat, I used, I restated my question and I answered my question. Now I'm going to go to the text and find details to support my answer. And I had already found my details. Um, the text states that the narrator, no, you know, I'm going to change that just a bit. Since it's in first person, I'm going to put the narrator states. The narrator states that he doesn't want to go and visit his dying grandfather because his summer vacation is almost over and I'm going back to the text he has some work that he needs to do I paraphrase the information, but that's what the narrator is saying. Two things that I learned about the narrator are, I'm going to go back up and make my correction right here. That should be R, because I learned two things, and that needs to be plural. Um, the narrator states that he doesn't want to go and visit his dying grandfather because his summer vacation is almost over and he has some work to do. The narrator also indicates that he is trying to get into an AP English class and the principal will move him to a higher level class if he passes a test. Okay. Two things that I learned about the, na the narrator are that he is selfish and he is intelligent. That's my restating and answering the question. Here are my details to support that. The narrator states that he doesn't want to go and visit his dying grandfather because his summer vacation is almost over and he has some work that he needs to do. The narrator also indicates that he is trying to get into an AP English class and the principal will move him to a higher level class if he passes a test. Now I'm going to put my concluding sentences. I'm going to break my concluding sentences up into two since I'm showing two different ideas here, two different things that show about the narrator. Um, the first detail shows that the narrator is selfish because he's thinking only about himself. The second detail shows that the narrator is intelligent because you have to be quite smart to be in an AP English class. Okay, I'm going to read back through my answer. 
Two things that I learned about the narrator are that he is selfish and he is intelligent. The narrator states that he doesn't want to go and visit his dying grandfather because his summer vacation is almost over and he has some work that he needs to do. The narrator also indicates that he is trying to get into an AP English class and the principal will move him to a higher level class if he passes a test. The first detail shows that the narrator is selfish because he's thinking only about himself. The second detail shows that the narrator is intelligent because you have to be quite smart to be in an AP English class. Now, my friends, this is the type of response that you must have. You need to make sure that you restate the question, answer the question, and use details from the text to support your answer, and then you have a concluding sentence or two. Okay, go ahead and push pause on the video and finish writing your response to question number two. Okay, now we're going to go, uh, we're going to work on model two, third person point of view. Please follow along as I read. Oh, and don't forget, when it's third person point of view, the narrator is outside of the story, okay? In a story told from the third person limited point of view, the narrator reveals the thoughts of one character. Here, the character is a dog named Buck. And this is from The Call of the Wild. Dazed, suffering intolerable pain from throat and tongue, with the life half throttled out of him, Buck attempted to face his tormentors. But he was thrown down and choked repeatedly, till they succeeded in, filling the, in filing the heavy brass collar from off his neck. Then the rope was removed, and he was flung into a cage-like crate. There he lay for the remainder of the weary night, nursing his wrath and wounded pride. He could not understand what it all meant. What did they want with him, those strange men? Why were they keeping him pent up in, his, in this narrow crate? He did not know why, but he felt oppressed. Okay, let's talk about this. It says, find two places where the narrator reveals Buck's thoughts. One example has been boxed. So this example right here, what did they want with him, these strange men? That is a thought that Buck is having, and the narrator was able to tell us that thought. It's a uh, third-person limited narrator, okay? Your task is to find another example where Buck's thought is revealed. Let's talk about question two. What more might an omniscient narrator be able to tell you? Well, remember, an omniscient narrator can tell us the thoughts of several different people or several different characters. So you need to figure out what other thoughts the uh, omniscient narrator would be able to tell us. Um, I, would like to, I would like for you to attempt to answer these two questions on your own. And after a while, we will discuss the answers in the class. Okay? Okay, let's get started.